Start streaming. Am I live? Oh, here we go. And we're live. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another Webflow workshop. I am your host, Nelson. Hello. Hi. This is going to be a fun one. We're going to go back to the basics on how to use Webflow. And um, one of my favorite companies that I like to follow uh, is Tesla. Tesla Motors and I wish to have one one day <laughs> and I think a lot of people have the same thing uh, same thought and so uh, what I noticed about their homepage is that it looks very elegant and very simple and you know what it is something that we can build together within about 45 minutes uh, with Webflow you know you have a basic uh, nav bar at the top, background video, that's easy to do now. You got an H1 right here, I'm thinking this H2, basic buttons, two links, and footer links. That's it, you know? So we're gonna go through on how to lay this out in Webflow, and then after that, gonna do some little interactions like uh, hover effects and whatnot, uh, for the buttons and then lastly if I have time try to do some more advanced interactions maybe like say a preloader or you click on one element and it affects another element okay so those kind of interactions and animations so we're going to get to it and also if you have any questions go ahead and ask them in the chat room as I go along and if you want to get on our Google Hangouts and ask on the air, go for it. I'll put the link in the chat room. Oh, have I been muted this whole time? <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. Oh, no, no, I was muted on Google Hangouts. Okay, cool. We're good. Whew. All right, so let's let's get to it. Uh. So, just like any other website, I would start off with a blank template. Okay. And I'm going to be switching back and forth between the live site of Tesla and uh, going back to my canvas. Okay. So, first thing we want to do, if I look here, we need a nav bar. So, simple enough. I'm going to go to my add elements panel on the left and drag in my nav bar okay my nav bar can be found under the components area drag that in and immediately i have a nav bar now at this point uh the nav bar has a couple of different elements already ready for you okay you have like a link block for your logo that brings that you can set to go back to your home page you have a nav menu with all of your nav links and for the responsive design, you already have a hamburger menu button, okay? Let's just see what that looks like. If I go here to my tablet view, these are your different breakpoints, your different views, okay? I immediately have that menu button, okay? When I go back to desktop, it's gone, okay? All right, so what do we got here? So let's go ahead and put our logo in. So I'm going to go on my computer and from my computer, I'm going to drag in a logo. There we go. Ooh, it's really big. Now, I'm going to give it a class name of logo. Actually, sorry, let me remove that. Okay, let me go to the link block because I want to set the width of my, I want to set the width of my uh, link block rather than the image because I want the image to span a hundred percent of the link block and because the link block does not have a width that's why it's growing so big okay so if I set the width to something like 250 nope smaller I'm gonna hold shift and press the down arrow on my keyboard until I find something good I think 130 is good cool okay so again, I'm sizing it down by the link block, not the actual image. Okay, now I'm gonna drag this margin top. So I'm giving a, a margin between the logo and the top bar. Okay, let's make that there, cool. 
All right. And lastly, I can set this link. So when someone clicks on this logo, I can go to the settings panel on the right, click on choose a page, and set it to my home page. And there we go. That link block will now take me to my home page. Can you guys, what do you mean no, no, no? Can you guys hear me? Uh, okay, well, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> All right, so next I have a couple of different nav items. Model S, X, Supercharger, da, da, da. So all of them are floating to the left. So what I can do is I'm going to go to my nav menu. And because we have these components that are that have pre-made styles for you, so that you don't have to do much of the work if you want to keep everything defaulted. But if you want to overwrite that um, those styles, you can do so by creating a new selector name like uh, nav menu okay and see notice how it's already floating to the right it's already pre-selected I want that to float to the left and there we go uh, let's make sure that that's not next to the Tesla logo and then we have a couple of different nav items so we're gonna go I'm gonna double click inside of here and start replacing the words model s model X and model three. We're not going to do all of the nav links. We're just going to do some of them. Okay. And now notice that this doesn't have a selector tab, uh, a selector name. So we're going to give it one. I'm going to call it nav item and you can call these whatever you want. Okay. It's all up to you how you want to name your classes. I'm going to set it to white. Okay. Yeah, they're all white and they all are uppercase there we go I'm gonna set it down just a little eh, 14 is fine 14 is fine all right and then now that I have styled that I can use the same styles for these for these other nav items so I just start typing nav and I see the nav uh, I see the selectors that already have the word nav in it so I can click on the one that I want so nav and there we go. And lastly, there is a little transparency and it's kind of gray. So I can do that right here. I'm going to select my nav bar. And again, it already has a default color of this gray, but I want to overwrite that. So I'm going to call it nav bar and give it a gray color. It seems like they're using something like that. And with this opacity, I can set it to like 50%. Okay, cool. All right. So the next thing is background video. So this is, I'll show you a trick how to make the background video full screen. Okay. So I'm going to go to my add element panel on the left again. And now our newest element right here, background video. You can just drag that in. All right. And I'm going to upload my video. Let's go ahead and find it. Okay. Now, again, like I said in the previous uh, workshop, you can continue designing while it's uploading and transcoding. So this shouldn't stop your workflow. Okay. So. I'm going to go and start setting the styles while I'm waiting for the upload to, to finish. So I'm going to give it a selector name of BG video. Okay. After BG video, I'm going to let's go ahead and set this to position fixed. Okay. Now I'm going to set my width a hundred percent and my height a hundred. Now watch this, you can type in VH. Okay. After that, I'm going to set the position to full and set the Z index to negative one. Okay. So the Z index, if you can think about like layers of a sandwich, okay. Uh, you have zero, that's your table. 
okay that's your default z index and then you want to put a layer on top of it then you go z index one and so that's another piece of the sandwich and two three four and you can go forever and you can also go backwards too so I have it negative one and just if you notice this um, error I mean not an error um, this warning it says elements with negative z index um, the only way to select them is to actually go to the navigator panel and then click on the element okay because I can't click on the background video notice how I'm always on body I can't click on the background video unless I go to the navigator and click background video. And now I can mess around with the styles. Okay, so that background video is transcoding. That'll take a while. So let's move on. So it's that easy to make a background video. We're gonna move on. Uh, Wesley has a question. How do you do the right align menu? Oh, good question. Let's go ahead and do that then. Okay, so this run right here nav menu it's already aligned lefts what I can do is I can drag in another let's see here hold on I'm thinking in my head how I'm gonna do this let me see if I go to nav menu with a hundred percent that's gonna go down to the next line okay Oh, there's my video. Yay! All right, so I don't want it 100%. Let's go 75%. It's going to go like that. And make sure... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two columns. Um, this logo right here, the width is going to be... Let me go back to logo. The width is going to be 20%. Oh, that's too big. 15%. And then this one could be, I'm going to keep going up until I hit the side. There we go. Okay, so 80, 81%. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm leaving enough space so I can right align my other nav menu. Okay, so in here, in this nav menu, I'm going to drag in another div block. I'm going to call that um, small nav menu and I'm going to float this to the right now what I can do is let me drag in a text link into the small nav menu yep and we can go to town so what do we got we got support find us support and then I'm gonna copy paste find us shop in my Tesla my Tesla cool and again I need to give these a style so I'm gonna call it small nav item oh uh, yes good one Alex it's like putting your sandwich below a glass table for the Z index set that to inline block and what inline block lets you do is have um, margins around this around the sides and still have it in line with all the other elements in the same row okay uh, no underline make it white and these are smaller so I'm gonna set it to 12 and the line height as well and then the margins actually no it's playing around with the paddings Move that right there. I think it needs more padding at the top. Oh, I'm holding the wrong button. Come on. There you go. There you go. Something like that. Cool. And then I can just do the same thing with these guys. Small nav item small nav item small nav item and hopefully that answers your question Wesley okay so again uh, just to recap what I did is I added another div inside of the nav menu and I floated this one to the right 
Okie dokie. Cool. Next thing, we're going to go ahead and add the word autopilot. So I'm thinking it's starting from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> and then goes to the top. So I'm going to... I'm going to wrap this whole thing right here in one div and then I'm going to make sure that it starts from the bottom and then pushes itself up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to let's see here. What do we have? Okay, I'm going to drag in a div block right here. And in this div block, I'm going to call it um, home page content. And I want that to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I want that to be position absolute and position to the bottom. But from the bottom, I'm going to go up a couple pixels, let's say 100. Okay? So it's right, now it's right there. Let's go 125. Cool. Let's see what this does. Um, other things that I need to start setting up. Um, everything is centered, so I should go ahead and start adding a text align center. And I think that's about it. I can move on to my autopilot word. So I have my heading. This would be my H1. I'm going to call it autopilot. Mm -hmm. H1. Okay, so what I did there is, let me go back. Instead of adding a selector, I want to select this tag, this H1 tag. So all the, all the H1s I put across my whole site will be affected by this, okay? All H1 headings. If I just want to affect this H1, then I would give it a class name, okay? So there we go. It's white. And I'm thinking it's all, oh, okay, so it's very thin. So I'm guessing it's a different font. Let's find a thin font. Uh, not thin enough. More thin. That one? Ah. Oh, wait, this one's a good one. Uh, thinner. Okay, there's no thin. Not really a thin. <laughs> Then, ah, there we go. Mm, that one? Cool. Yeah, we'll do it. Not exact, but it'll do. Cool. So we have autopilot, and then we have automatic steering. Oh, I can't select this? Interesting. I can't highlight that. Okay, well, keep on going. So I'm going to copy and paste the element, change this to a H2. And what does he say? Automatic steering. That is so awesome. <laughs> Automatic steering. Automatic steering, speed, lane changing, and parking. Speed, lane changing, and parking. Cool. And again, I'm going to select my all H2 headings. Change it to white. Uh, did I use Leto? I think so. Nope. What is this? I did. Interesting. Oh, there it goes. I'm thinking this. And then it has to be small. Okay, and we're almost there, guys. Uh, two buttons. Let me get this button right here. What's it called? Uh, the label is Order Your Model S. Model S. Hold on. Okay, it's all caps, and then it has a so order button. It's all caps, it's smaller, uh, let's space out the, the letters a little bit, okay, 
get a background color. I think it needs more padding. Yeah, just a bit. Something like that. Oh no, it's thin. Not bad. Let's go like that. Okay. And so, let's go... Test drive button. Okay. I'm just gonna copy paste so I can get my second button. Ten on each side. That's good right there. And this one's gonna be test drive, right? Yeah, schedule a test drive. But now that it drives itself isn't it a test ride huh get it okay I'm dumb <laughs> just kidding all right so this order button I want to use the same um, the the same styles that I already set but I want to change the background so I'm going to say order button and give it a combo class of gray okay so that way I can keep all the styles that I had already made for order button and the only thing I want to change is the background so something like this a little bit darker there you go and it needs more space between the buttons and this text so I'm gonna go back to my h2 push down the bottom margin a bit there we go and two links sweet two text links let me put one there oh wait can't because it's it's uh, in a different row so I need to put a div block okay so a div block makes its own row so let me explain what just happened this order button right here notice how the display setting is inline block again that's a block that's in line with other elements on the same row okay and then this one is inline block as well so it's still in line with other elements on that row if I add another link right beside of this and it's uh, inline or inline block it'll stay in the same row but because I want the two next link text links to go in a new row I have to create a new row and that's what div blocks could be used for okay so hopefully that explains that um, I'm gonna give it a um, small links wrapper okay and I'm gonna push this down a bit right there let's go yeah 20 and this one is also going to be it's already centered okay I'm gonna drag in a text link there we go and this one is apply for leasing apply for leasing <laughs> and I'm gonna copy paste and the other one is value my trade in trade in and now I'm going to give both of them a selector and some styles so let's just I'm going to call this small small link okay and I'm going to set it to display inline block this one is white again do they have underlines no they don't okay so no underline and cool let me put it back to Leto cool inset the padding nope hello oh I'm going the wrong way <laughs> there you go let's go to 20 cool and then this one small link as well and we should be good sweet all right last part is the bottom links right here okay oops I'm selected on some there we go so the bottom links here okay I'm just going to 
create a another nav or sorry another div block and I'm going to give it a selector name of footer and just like I did with the uh, home page content I'm going to do a position absolute a width of 100 percent um, and push it to the bottom and there we go we have a footer that's sticking to the bottom and in this footer we're going to have a container okay to contain our links and all I have to do is we're just gonna call it footer links for each one so I have a text link hello Danny 2343 alright and I'm just gonna say Tesla Tesla Motors cool this is gonna be called footer link so I can set it to white alright make it really small actually these are too small now that I see it it should be bigger yeah like that okay Wesley asks what's the difference between a container and a div block great question so a container as you can see here is already centered okay a container contain um, has preset styles um, to help you out okay so the width is already set to I think 940 with some margins on the or paddings on the side for 10 pixels on both sides and is also uh, has a margin margin auto on both sides so that way it centers that container okay a div block has no styles applied to it um, so all it is is just a div block that spans 100 percent of width of the of the um, canvas and has a display block okay and that's just natural to that okay hopefully this makes sense so containers are really is really great to use whenever you need to center content within a certain pixel size of 940 width cool okay so footer link uh, display inline block and I'm going to give it a margin of 10 uh, 15 and I'm thinking it has a border yeah let's go ahead and I'll do the border on this one so I did a copy paste and this one I'm gonna give it a combo class of with border and what I mean by this is I'm going to give it a, a padding of 15 yeah and add a border on the left that's white and now I have my separator okay I'm just gonna do legal and contact legal contact and that should be good enough for now and right now this is bumping up way too close to the bottom so I'm gonna give this footer some padding on the on the bottom push it up a bit mm-hmm and there we go uh, yeah let's see this in action okay oh it's a weird URL let me change the URL real quick let's give it a Tesla test or a Tesla workshop Mm hmm going to publish it and let's see how it looks ah, not too bad not too bad and we did that in what 20 minutes 30 minutes let me close this here's mine here's the official yeah all right so any questions before we move on to some intermediate type of things yeah 
And also, if you have anything that you're working on that you would like me to critique towards the end of this uh, stream, go ahead and shoot the links off. And yeah. Hey, everyone. Levi, hello. from Tuning in from Kenya. Awesome, from Kenya. Welcome. Does Webflow optimize background videos for slow connections? Uh, we, we don't optimize... I don't know for sure. That's a great question to ask on the forums, but I'm pretty sure you have to optimize it yourself. And one of the barriers we have is you cannot have, or the limitations is you cannot have a video bigger than 30 megabytes. Okay, so if you try to upload a video over 30 megabytes, uh, we won't let you. Mm -hmm. But great question, Dennis. And yeah, you might want to re um, repost that question on the forums. Hello, Vil from Finland in the mix. Ooh, in the mix. <laughs> welcome, welcome. All right, we're going to move on to the, the intermediate type stuff. Okay. All right. So I've noticed that a lot of people have been um, having some trouble with the current, okay, um, the, the, the current pseudo class. Okay. For instance, if I click on this guy right here, my logo, okay, it has a pseudo class of current. So what does that mean? That means that right now I'm on the home page, okay? So if I look at my pages right here, I have one page, it's my home page. And if I go back to my logo, okay, so I'm back in my logo. It's a link block, okay? And if I go to my settings, I have it linked to my home page. Now, if I remove that link, watch what happens to the pseudo class current. It goes away. So this is what the current class uh, means. It means you it means when a link is set to its to the current page that you're looking at, then it'll have a class of current which lets you style that link block differently than the other links that you have in your nav bar. Okay. So for instance, let me add another link. So I copy pasted that. I'm going to call this home. Okay. And for home, I'm going to set the link to go to the home page. Now, if I go back to my styles panel, notice how it has the pseudo class current now. Okay. And also we defaulted current classes, uh, current pseudo classes to go to blue. Okay. So if I scroll down, it still shows white. I know it's kind of confusing, but you can still change the color around. Okay. Now notice how only this nav item is changing, but not the other nav items because the other nav items do not have the current pseudo class okay but I want to switch it back to white okay and after that I'm going to give it a a solid border actually no sorry a border bottom and give it a color actually let me get the same color as this guy real quick let me save it to my swatches Gonna go back home. Still on my current class. I mean current pseudo class. Change the color to say red and make that width three. Okay. And just so well if I look at it now. Actually, those aren't working. Notice how um notice how if I remove the style. Watch what happens to this nav bar. It kind of jumps. Hopefully you can see that. See how it jumps like that? Now I can stop the jumping if I go here to this button right here. Go back to my nav item. So I'm now on my higher selector, nav item. And I'm going to set the style again of the border to three pixels width. 
and instead of having a color, I'm going to set it to transparent. So that way, before it's current or hover or whatever pseudo class, the default has a transparent border bottom. And then when I when I apply a color to it, then there's no jumping of the full bar. Okay, so let's go ahead and play around with the hover state now. Now that we got our current set, let's go ahead and set our hover state for this nav item. So right now it's already transparent, but I want to change the color to something like gray. Oh, opacity is zero. There we go. And the reason for this is I want to indicate to the user that you're hovering over this, but it's not the current page. Okay. And so this is what's going to look like. Pretty cool. Okay. So give it that extra effect. Wouldn't it be, Aviv says, wouldn't it be easier to have a height for the nav bar? Yes, it would. Great question. Yes, it would. But when be careful when setting pixel heights for your elements, because if at any time your elements need to grow in size, the parent element that is set to a certain pixel size will not grow with the elements inside. For example, I'm going to go to nav bar right here, and I'm going to give it a pixel size of... 60. Ooh, that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> 60, right? Now, watch what happens if I say I grow these guys, okay? These nav items, I want them to be ridiculously big. Okay? And notice what happens. I started in another row because it's because these items are being pushed down. And so now it, the height of the nav bar isn't elastic. It's not it's not covering it. Now, if I remove the height and leave it to auto, there we go. Now it's more elastic. If I bring this back down, and there we go. Okay. So yes, be careful with those um, exact pixel heights. You want to keep all your elements as fluid as possible. All right. So we have the hover state, we have our current, awesome. And yeah, now let's do some, some more stuff with the, um, some more fun stuff with the hover, okay? Um, let's make this zoom in a little bit. Let's make it scale up, okay? So when I hover over this button, I want it to scale, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is I want to make sure I have a timer, okay? I want to make sure that I have some sort of time because instead of just going from, uh, instead of going from, actually, let me let me show you instead of trying to explain. So I'm going to go to my hover state. I'm going to add a transform and scale it up a bit like that, and then I'm done. Now watch what happens. It's cool, but it's it's just very jarring. It's there's no animation with it. So to add some sort of timed animation, I can go back to my hover button, I mean my order button, and click on this stopwatch right here. Find the transform. There it is. And now in 200 milliseconds, it's gonna go from one scale to 1.26 or something whatever i put it at for the hover so so it's more nice when you have it instead of just jarring there's some sort of animation okay so there we go all right Any questions so far before I do my last thing, which is going to be something kind of advanced? And for the advanced one, I'm going to go a little bit fast.
Okay. If no questions, get ready. We're going to use 3D transforms. Why? Because we can. So I'm going to wrap this whole thing in a div. And again, why? Because I can. <laughs> So we're putting all the elements inside of that div block because we're going to do some fun stuff. Okay, div block, and I'm going to call it page content. All right. So what I want to do is when you click on the order your model S, crazy stuff will happen. Wesley, what are you drinking that still that needs a spoon still in the cup? Oh, it's coffee, but I have no. <laughs> it's coffee, but yeah. don't worry about it. <laughs> Anyways, good question. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and let's do some fun stuff. I, I'm gonna go really quick here, so I'm gonna make my own crazy modal thing. I'm gonna call it modal, and in this modal, I'm going to have a form just to pretend that this is the process to buy a car okay there's my form um, my modal I'm gonna set it to position fixed 50% so I'm laying this on top of everything else and I'm gonna center it on the page okay and so I'm getting the exact center of my screen. I want to set the padding for this. Come on. There we go. Set some background. Make sure a border width to make it more friendly on the edges. And my color of that give this a order button there we go yes I'm going really fast so modal button get rid of that zero that one out zero that one out cool button text buy it cool um, also let's give it some shadow under effect, oops, under shadows, you can have a box shadow. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding some sort of. So this is how you would make a custom modal, putting something on top of something, but it only gets called uh, when it only gets called when you uh, use interactions. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want to do is the, what should I do? What should I do? Oh, the opacity should be zero so I don't see it. And display setting should be that so I don't see it. If I ever need to get back to it, I can just turn those settings back on. Okay. And now let's play with interactions. So in, when I click on this guy, what I want to do is name my interaction and when I clicky when I clicky on this it's gonna affect a different element it's going to affect the page content the wrapper that holds everything except for the modal okay on the first click what do I want to do with the page content well ooh, that's weird things happen okay well just keep going I want to let's see here I want to scale it down no lock I'm gonna scale it down oh that's why let's go scale it down to like 75 but make sure that the okay we can leave it there actually scale down 75 make the opacity 20 And hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, 
No, the skew. I want skew. And then the second click, I'm going to set the scale back to 1 and the opacity 100, so I'm halfway there of what I want. So there we go. Sweet, but I want more. Let's play around. So under my transforms, let's go ahead and do that guy. And we're going to do some transform stuff. Like what if I can rotate and it went like something like this. Ugh, no, that's not good. Getting crazy. No. Ugh, what I'm, I'm tr trying for something. Trying for something, guys. And this is what it all is. It's um, trial and error, you know. <laughs> like a like a swinging door or something squeaky 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 <laughs> oh this is fun all right not sure if i'll be able to make this happen what's happening in my brain but we'll just go with the zooming effect all right so we'll go with the zooming effect for now i was trying to something where it like flattens down but you know we'll we'll do this for now for time's sake um, and yeah, uh, for the last 10 minutes, so I'm going to finish this up in three minutes and then for the last 10 or 15 minutes, uh, go for, um, go ahead and ask your questions, anything that doesn't have to do with this workshop, but with Webflow or anything, um, if you want to show off your, uh, designs that you're working on and you want a quick critique. So I will get to those. So I'm going to finish this one up. Uh, first click, it does this second click. It does that. So cool. Actually, no, I don't need that one because I have to click on something else. So, yeah. And then lastly, when I click on this, I want to show my modal. So first click, it um, display block. And then another step, fade in. And then done. And then lastly, if I click on my page content in the background, uh, click page. This is going to close the modal. So affect the modal, and when I click on it, it fades out, and then the next step is display none. And then also, when I click on this, the page content goes back to scale to 1 and opacity 100. And let's see if it happened. Yay, it didn't work. Aww. In my mind, it did. In my mind, it worked, guys. What? And the modal's supposed to show. Aww. Oh, well. That's what it is. Trial and error. It's all fun and games, right? Let's see what I came out with. Oh, did it work? Darn. Oh, well. That was fun, though. That was fun. All right. All right. Here we go. Questions and stuff from you guys. Where can we get the video for the website? Uh, you can go to... What, what I did is I went to Tesla right here, and uh, I right-clicked, and I saved video as. That simple. Uh, Synchronia. Let's see here. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you guys are messing with. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> wrong site. There we go. Ooh. I like this. Hold on, I gotta inspect this. Let's see here. What do you is that an image or a what did you do here? No, no. What did you do here? Is that a background image or did you make those shapes in Webflow? Ooh, Synchrina, tell me! I'm interested. That's really cool. Okay. 
Nice subtle hover effects. Great job. Background video. Okay, this is a work in progress. Great job so far. I like it. Um, the reason why I like this is because it's different. It's a different type of take because like websites are usually, um, you know, very horizontal, you know. But when people start messing around with that horizontal line and, and making angles and different shapes and everything, it makes the web become more unique. And I love that. Uh, so great job so far. This logo is badass. I mean, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, great job so far. Love it. Um, and the, the pattern texture over this. So awesome. And you guys, if you need um, pattern uh, uh, textures to go over your background videos, you can totally go to uh, Google search texture. Uh, no, not texture. Uh, transparent. Sorry. Transparent um, patterns. Transparent patterns. And it's the first link. There we go. Transparenttextures.com. And let me link this here. Really cool place. To get some, to get some uh, textures for your site. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, keep going, uh, Synchronia. Yeah, keep going with this. I want to see this done. And when it's done, uh, bring it back to the next workshop or show it off on the forums. And yeah, uh, Sydney. Here we go. Am I anyone else? Anyone else? Tech magazine. Here we go. Tech magazine. Ah, okay. Yeah, I saw this on the forums. And uh, first thing I noticed is this guy right here. This drop down. Really great idea. You know, super simple because in UX, um, Eyes read websites in a F formation. So it starts at the top left and scans like that and goes back and down and then scans and back and down. So it's the F pattern. Okay. And this really shows that F pattern because you start from here and then you go here and then you go here again and then you go here and you scroll down. And you go. So really great job. One thing I would change though is this button gets lost within this box because they're the same color. Sure you have a drop uh, drop shadow or outer glow, but you can make this a different color. Maybe make it um actually yeah, you need a second color. I see no Oh, you have gray and you have purple. That's cool. You're keeping minimal, but you need some sort of call out color. For example, if you go to the Tesla site, um, the call out color is red. Uh, let's go to the real Tesla site. So the call out color is red. And so the first thing you see is this button right here. Whereas this tech magazine, I know book your tickets now. It, well, unless book your tickets now is the first thing you want people to see when they look at this box. So probably get a complimentary color for this purple. But yeah, Really good. Um, Vil, if you want me to look at your link, uh, can I have a mod look at it first and approve it? If not, you're going to have to send me the webflow.io link. Uh, still going with this one. Love the hovers. Uh, so these are simple hovers. Really cool. But if you want to push it a little bit more, maybe have the hovers... Uh, do something with the image. Maybe the image zooms in a little, but gets cropped out because of the overflow gets hidden on the link block of something, or um, maybe underline, give the link block a bottom, a bottom border like I did with uh, this guy right here. You know, maybe have some sort of bottom border coming up or something. You know, do push it a little bit further. See what happens. That would be really cool. Um, all of these, if you can, not sure if I'm a fan of the underline, you know, but again, this is all subjective. You can keep the underline. You don't have to, um, all insights. Cool. Cool. Would it be better if all insights instead of floating all the way to the right would be somewhere here, right next to insights and then have some sort of 
separator line like a pipe and then put all insights just saying just a thought same thing with all about gear uh, yes yes i can't wait <laughs> model three reservations next week really good job I'm liking it do you have more pages? Oh, you do! Sweet! Nice! Oh, this is beautiful. Great job, great job. Oh, okay! Look at that, different colors. Really? Kevin Spacey? Knows responsive web design? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Alright, Anna, thank you so much for checking out the link. I'm gonna look at Vils site let's see here custom domain name published on webflow awesome Ooh. okay i'm not going to translate it because i want to keep everything pure um nice it it feels it feels inviting already nice he added um a hover timer with this one cool I'm wondering how come this doesn't hover is it because I'm on this certain page if this is if this one has the um, the current pseudo class I would give it a different color or a different style treatment so that way it's telling the user uh, that you're on this page and that's why yeah it goes to the same page so Fix that uh, current pseudo class, and you should be good. All right, nice. Okay, we have cards. It's beautiful. Good iconography, and let me just double check this icon real quick. Um, nice. Okay, so this person is using SVGs. So if you are, if you have, excuse me, if you have um, icons, line art, or what have you, it's always best to use. SVG because it'll come out super clean on any uh, display. For instance, if you were to look at a JPEG in a retina screen or a higher res screen, it won't look as crisp, but for SVGs for um, vector art, it'll look crisp no matter what because SVGs is scalable vector graphics. So that means it's just code that's generating the graphic it's not actual rasterized pixels okay uh scrolling down nice nice use with the colors and the whole textured i like the textured background it gives it more you know it gives it that nice design it makes it feel better okay nice spacing light block light box yes i was right Nice. Great job. All right. Uh, here we go. Alex has a link that he wants to show us. Find your dream home. Okay, a uh, tutorial site for dynamic Google Maps. Ah, oh, yes. Cool. With the new dynamic embeds, you can create... Uh, you can embed dynamic uh, Google Maps. So if I go here, oh, you did a, <laughs> that's cool. Oh, how do I close this? Oh no. Oh. Uh, but I know what you're going for. Let's see how it's done, tutorial. Nice. Oh, it's right here on the forums. Great job, Alex. Vladimir, scroll up. My question is above. Uh, where's your question? Oh, on my form in different countries, the submit button automatically changes the user's language while the rest of the website is in English. How do I keep it, the submit button, in English? Um, I think that happens when Google Chrome or another website or another browser uh tran auto translate stuff and so i think it's on the client side i could be wrong but i don't know how to keep everything in a certain language hmm. uh, all right any other questions and while i'm waiting for the last two we're going to take the last two questions so while i'm waiting for that 
Um, want to say thank you to everyone in the chat room. Thank you so much for coming back to this uh, workshop. Um, we have workshops every week, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, if you want to reach us, uh, customer support team for any account, billing, or technical questions, hit us up, support at webflow.com. We'll always be there for you. We'll help you out with um, the issue. If you want to join the community, a lot of great people there. It's really growing really fast. Everyone's helping each other out. Go to forum.webflow.com. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at Webflow app or on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Webflow. If you want to follow me, all I talk about is nerdy things and Webflow, of course. Uh, uh, follow me on Twitter at the Pixel Geek. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys uh, play around with all the stuff Webflow does. I mean, um, do something crazy. Just make crazy things in webflow now that you have all this power um i've been watching um on twitch this game called the division and it inspired me so here you go i'll show you it inspired me to redesign my home page or, or my personal site and here you go here's some sketches i did because i was like oh would it would it be cool if the let me look for it where's it at oh right here so wouldn't it be cool if the menu button like popped out in some way and so right there i was like wouldn't it be cool if it popped out and then my my face would be there and, and whatnot and then i i'm working on it right now and i said oh, okay it, it kind of works and so here you go here's my here's what i'm working on right now and so let me refresh there you go. So I have animations, interactions happening all at the same time. But this, so right here, this guy, like I showed you, whoop, boop. <laughs> so it's kind of like a video game. Yeah. So yeah, go crazy. Do some weird stuff and see where your mind takes you. See what you can learn. And the only way to, um, learn new stuff is to do stuff you've never done before so go use the power of webflow to make dreams happen <laughs> all right so again thanks guys i will see you next week tuesday at 10 a.m sharp until then have fun and as always make the web beautiful see ya